checked in. So at this time, we'll, um, American Legion Post 33 from Nina will give the presentation of the flags and then say the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you could all stand, please, and remove your hats. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Sir, sir, thank you for having us. Thank you very much, and thank you for what you have done. Thank you. Um, Supervisor Powers. 161 years ago, Abraham Lincoln declared that we were a thankful nation and de de dedicated one day a year for our nation to be thankful to that, that, whom we, that person whom we uh, worship and adore. Almighty and gracious creator, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. Amen. Do I have a motion to, for the adoption of this evening's agenda? Second. Motion is made and second for the, this evening's adoption of the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Suppose say nay. Nay. Do we have one nay? I've been asked by the clerks again tonight to go ahead and those that uh, seconded, if you'll go ahead and call in like we were practicing, it makes it a lot easier on them and then they can catch that because sometimes there's two, three of you, so whoever gets called in first, if you'll push your button in, they can catch that on that and everybody will be good. And also raise your hand, I'm told. At this time, we'll have public comment. Anyone wishing to talk to the board? On anything having to do with Winnebago County, step forward, state your name. You'll have two minutes to speak on anything that you would like to have. Name and address, please. Anyone wishing to speak to the board this evening? Anyone at all? Anyone on? No one on that. This time we'll close that portion. Communication from County Clerk. She has none this evening. Everything was run so well. Reports from committees, commissions, and boards. You'll have to raise your hands because I have no way of seeing it otherwise. So anyone wishing to report on anything in commission, um, boards? Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick sort of friendly um, suggestion. When you, when you come in the evening to the meeting and you get to the fourth floor, send it back down to one so that it's available for the next people coming and vice versa. When you leave and you head down to one, send it back up to four for those of us who are still trying to get out. 
Just a pos just a suggestion. Thank you. Supervisor Schellinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Parkview Health Center. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The UWO Fox Cities Campus Board of Trustees will meet on December 2nd on Midway, the campus at Midway Road in Menasha. And Walt Albrecht has an announcement, I believe. Supervisor Albrecht. Yes, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, um, if you and your family are looking for something to do, may I? Uh, please consider looking at the Barlow. Thank you very much. Any other reports? Supervisor Patterson. Just wanted to give an update on the County Veterans uh, Service Commission. Uh, inadvertently, we ended up, due to circumstances, we ended up having to meet at Parkview this past month. And there's the potential that we may actually be meeting there as opposed to the Coughlin Center. That'll be more of a game time decision based on circumstances involving one of our folks on the board. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Boards, commissions? Anyone on Zoom? Oh, Supervisor Hancock Cook. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Egan, I'm just, I'm not absolutely sure where I'm supposed to ask about this, but I'm curious about um, the, as we look at the agenda that we have today that is 400 and something pages long, or the packet that we received that was 400 pages long, I'm curious as to if there's rules about what's included, because there were 200 pages of tables that could easily have been referenced as opposed to actually being an inclusion in the agenda or in the packet. Um, there was also some screen grab data that was unexplained later in that in that resolution and I'm just I don't understand why some resolutions include huge packets of data when they could easily be referenced versus other resolutions that simply have a letter and then the resolution and so I just want us to as we're looking at the resolutions I, I wonder if those could be explained okay. anyone else Hmm. You want to talk about it right now? Sure, if you want to speak on it right now, you may. Um, just a quick explanation. On tonight's agenda, you will see there are a couple of ordinances related to our recodification project. And one of the ordinances concerns general zoning. General zoning is a huge piece of our general code. And obviously, to be transparent, um, we needed to show what was there and what were the changes. Now, I am told from county clerk that the packets that were mailed did not have the 400 pages. They were all, and that's what I was just advised. Okay. That's not the resolution I'm referring to. Okay. It does actually have the packet does have anybody want to tell me the number of pages right off 496 um, and it's not resolute not related to that resolution um, okay. I'll talk about it when we get there okay that's fine not, if, if that was it because I'm not I, yelling at you no 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 I <laughs> that's fine people yell at me all the time um, but I just wanted to clarify if that, it was involving ordinances I can tell you obviously we want to show what the changes are and I know there was a specific recommendation that we don't send out, because probably if it was 400 pages, if the zoning ordinance was included, it probably would have been 800 pages. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. But we can get to it when, you, when we get to the uh, resolution you're talking about. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. One last time. Anyone else? Okay. At this time, we'll have County Executive Dables report appointments. All right, I want to start off by uh, wishing a happy Veterans Day to all the veterans that were here and really just want to take time to appreciate uh, your sacrifice uh, for our freedoms. <clears throat> and uh, Chairman Egan, I think it's 
uh, a fantastic tradition to keep up that we have the honor guard come um, every year on this month. Um, there's only uh, one item uh, on the agenda that I, I want to talk on tonight, and that would be um, the resolution for to amend the rule 22.3, uh, the rules of the county board. Um, and I just want to say that I'm uh, in support of this rule change. Um, I've already directed staff that we're going to reach out to, to chairman um, a week before the packets are due to see if there's anything that you want us to work on um, to make sure that we have fiscal notes and agenda item reports and everything prepared for you. Um, so we're going to kind of flip our, our way of thinking of instead of reaching out to department heads first, we're going to reach out to chairs uh, directly first. Um, so, and, and this resolution um, <clears throat> I'm in support of. Um, so I just wanted to let that know. This is, we're not in conflict on that. Um, and then, uh, if it's okay, if there's any other questions. Let's see if there's any questions here. All right. Let's move on to appointments. Any questions? I don't know if coming up. Do we have any questions this evening? Have anything that's on the agenda for the county executive? Not seeing any, you may move on to your appointments. All right. Uh, and for this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask Del Vopel if you would uh, come up and join me today um, with the Honor Guard. I am proposing to you an uh, appointment of the new Winnebago County CVSO um, that is uh, Del Vorpel. Uh, so one of my um, priorities with the veterans service is getting out and finding veterans uh, where they're at, as well as figuring out uh, what more can we put around them. Veterans service for a long time has been focused on VA benefits alone. Um, so what are the other things that we have to offer within the county? So how do we how do we develop that game plan of what in human services? What in public health? Uh, what in Parkview? Um, can we can we make sure that we get you on the list? Uh, to, to be in Parkview when the time's needed? What are the other things that we can wrap around veterans? Um, more so than just going out and meeting where they're at and doing satellite hours um, for veteran service benefits uh, for so somebody to, to give us that direction give us that game plan um, I couldn't think of anybody uh, better, and hopefully you, you read the packet, uh, than a major in uh, the U.S. Army that needed five acres of land uh, to build a mobile hospital on. Um, so with that, I'd, I'd like to ask Vel to come up for any questions or introduce, uh, say a, a word or two about himself. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Del Vopel, um, if you did get a chance to read my resume, um, do have uh, multiple years in uh, civilian life doing environmental health and safety. Um, one of the things that kind of a shared vision in that is just the ability to continuously improve and, and coordinate a lot of different entities to make things happen uh, to keep people safe and, and, and in compliance, uh, federal, state, and local laws. Um, in the military, I was a, I retired as a major. My last uh, duty assignment was a combat support hospital. I was the XO and uh, S1 of that. Uh, also uh, deployed as a medical logistics officer with uh, my, my company into Iraq in 0304. Um, I have eight kids, three are in the military, two in the Army, one in the uh, Marines, and one sadly going into the Air Force. That was a joke, by the way. Um, so uh, right now, uh, I have eight total kids uh, living in the, the state and across the country um, from the Wapaka area, and I'm proud to serve. Proud, uh, it's a great honor to uh, take care of veterans and then help coordinate with uh, the rest of the services and opportunities available for everyone. So. Um, looking very, very much looking forward to this. Thank you. Any questions for Dell before I make this appointment nomination? No. How long has the position been vacant? Two months, Tim? Uh, Roughly? Beginning of September. Beginning of September. All right. All right, uh, with that, I would like to uh, make the appointment for a Director of Veteran Services of Del J. Vopel. Motion has been made and second for the approval. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Welcome to Winnebago County. Thank Welcome. Okay, my report, um, Supervisor Gustafson is called and asked to be excused, and Supervisor Nussbaum has asked to be excused. They are the only two that has asked to be excused. Um, 
This is nothing that we have to approve or whatever. I uh, gave all of you papers if you were interested in any of the uh, Wisconsin County Mutual Insurance people, and there was only two that did so. I put their names in, Steve Bender, County Board Supervisor District 13, and Andrew Jennings, Risk Management for Winnebago County. I put their names in there. I do not know if they will get one of the positions there or not, but uh, they have been submitted for that. So, any questions of me? All right, All right on then. Consent calendar. Motion's been made and seconded. Oops, we got, did I hear a second? We got hands in the air all over. So we got, we got a hand up back there for there was a second. Supervisor Hansen. I just want to make, is this the right time I would like to pull resolution 59, item number 13? 59, number 13. Okay, Supervisor Swan. Okay. Okay. All right, so I do have a motion from Supervisor Hintz, seconded by Supervisor Holt. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Carried. So we'll go right to that. Number 13. Supervisor, which one's going to answer it here? You both got. Supervisor Hansen? Am I needing to make a motion for the. For 59, is that is that what you're asking? Number 13, you pulled 13, correct? Correct, correct. correct. So is this. So now is the time that we talk about it, and because and, uh, that's the only thing that hasn't been approved. So now is the time we talk about it, make any corrections or whatever on it. Pardon? Right. Right. So, so you'd need a motion to bring up your discussion in a second, and then you'd discuss it. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. Does this need to be first introduced into the agenda by the PNF committee, and then we discuss? No. Or no? Or no. Okay. no. Um, I just have concerns um, and and some questions about this, especially when it comes to. Do you want to make a motion to bring it onto the floor? Oh, make it, I apologize. Making a motion to bring Resolution 59-11-2024 to approve the values in REM tax foreclosed properties for auction. Do I need to read each? Seconded by Supervisor Powers. Now you may discuss it. The reason that um, I am polling this is I'm, I just have some concerns, especially when it comes to um, appraisals. Um, and I'm going to actually kind of refer to some of the expertise of Supervisor Swan. Because I, I just, I have, I have questions. I'm uncomfortable with this resolution. Um, so I need to hear people's, people's thoughts, please. Okay. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm, I'm an appraiser, uh, and as such, I'm going to make some statements and comments here, but they're not to be construed as doing an appraisal review under, uh, under standard three of USPAP. But uh, I, I spoke with Corporation Council on this, and um, first of all, there's just several items in the resolution that require amendment and cleanup in terms of terminology. And if I may, I'd like to go down through it and make suggestions. You may, yes. Okay. So on line number two, um, instead of approved values, 
I recommend approved market values. And the appraisals that I looked at in here in support of some of the properties are market value opinions. So I just want to clarify that we are, we are approving market value because it could be use value, investment value, something other than market value. So approved market values on in-rem tax foreclosed properties is my first suggestion. Um, on line 16, uh, Winnebago County General Code 3031A says appraised price, not appraised values. So I'm going to recommend that values be changed to price. On line 27, approval of the proposed appraised market values should be approval of the appraised market values. So I'm removing proposed and interjecting market values. On line 43 through 46, there's a um, statement that's a suggested value. It should be market value instead of suggested in all four of those. And finally, on line 55, um, we need appraised market values of the property parcels listed. So that, that does it for my suggestions on that. I looked at the, the appraisals. Um, I noticed that, that the first four properties that were remnant parcels, basically we blew off getting an appraisal on, on those because um, I guess for low, because of you know, their low value of properties or you know, there's not enough comps out there for the appraiser to do it. I, I, I don't agree with that, okay? There's appraisers out there that are qualified to value remnant parcels. And really, you need to value all of these, and all of the valuations should conform with Chapter 32, Wisconsin Stats Eminent Domain in terms of um, development and reporting of appraised value. So we need to make sure the appraiser's including language and you know terminology and valuation techniques that comply with the requirements of Wisconsin 32 Wisconsin statutes chapter 32 eminent domain in my opinion so I think we're doing a good job uh, getting this going there's growing pains with this under the new requirements um, we're not quite there yet I like what I see uh, you know, but we're just not quite there yet at the resolution though as far as I'm concerned you know, for, for purposes of what you're trying to accomplish here tonight, with these changes that I've suggested, I think I'm fine with it. Thanks. Are you making a motion to amend them for to say? I make a motion to amend based on what I said here, uh, and I'm hoping Corporation Council has been listening. What I would ask: Could the Corporation Council make uh, a statement regarding? the need to comply with Chapter 32 eminent domain because these properties are takings, essentially, so. Uh, what I will say is, is we spoke at about 3 o'clock when you called me this right. afternoon. Um, I agree with you that in terms of line 16, the word should be price because that is the word that is referenced in 3.03. .03. And as we discussed, I could not make the changes before this meeting because this is what personnel and finance did and I was not going to change that but as I said right. you could make the amendments in terms of market value I did speak with uh, the treasurer she is here she came tonight right because as I told you I was not at PNF I was at another meeting yep and in fact it should be market value that's mm -hmm. clear mm -hmm. um, between you and me regarding 27 when you took out the word proposed I think it could still be proposed appraised market value but again that's not a, a killer as far as I'm concerned well if, the, if I may the comp you know um, proposed suggests that, that your appraiser hasn't concluded market value in the reports and that's not true the appraisals are complete 
Market value yeah, has been concluded. But it's, a, it's proposed to the board. The board is the one that decides. So I guess it's the way you read something and interpret it. All right. Of the proposed appraised market value is proposed to the board. Because okay. Even I, though you've got an appraiser. Okay. I, I, I get what you're saying. That's what I'm just yeah. saying. But that's fine if you want to take uh, that proposal. You know, I mean, it's, not, it's, it's up to this board what they want to do. That's absolutely right. Um, and in terms of Chapter 32, as you all know, I will not speak off the top of my head. If I don't know the information, I'm going to have to look at the statute. Right. So I will okay. delay that. Like I that. said, I, th I, I think this is a good first step, but I think we need to dive into, you know, what the requirements are for, for remnant parcels especially and that language be included in the appraisals that, that conform with the requirements of Chapter 32 Wisconsin stats. Thanks. Yeah, and if you look, those, as you had indicated, those remnant parcels are like underwater or whatever it may be. Yep, but there are appraisers out there that are qualified to do these parcels. They are more difficult, so you may see a low-value opinion and say, well, why are we spending all this money on a low-value parcel? But, in fact, in order to really comply with what's required now, you, you have to get these parcels valued. So there are so appraisers who are qualified to do this work. I get, would they have to be scuba divers too if it's underwater? Yeah, they might have to be, yeah. yeah. Before we go they any further, we do have a motion for amendment, but I most, didn't, you most, didn't hear any seconds. Motion for amendment. Did I hear a second? Second, second by Supervisor Hanson. Any other discussion on this? Supervisor Hanson. Just a point of clarification. Are we including or that we're proposed or not? I don't think we should, but, uh, you know, That's, corporation it's up to council. You. you guys decide the policy. Yeah. I don't. Because, again, proposed suggests that the appraisal, appraised values are preliminary and not concluded in, yeah, in a formal report. Any other discussion? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So then... Are you or are you not including proposed? Yes or no? I would suggest no. Okay, very good. Is that going to be your amendment then? Yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do appreciate Supervisor Swan's comments. Um, I would ask that the timer be turned back on so that we're not in violation of Rule 10.2. I would also like to remind... possible here. That's okay. I would also like to remind the board that these are just the suggested auction prices for the property. It's not guaranteed that these properties will sell at that price. I mean, if they would, I have $500 in cash. So um, <laughs> based on how things have been going lately, I highly doubt that these properties would actually sell for the listed prices here where the auction is starting. That, that's my understanding. The arc could answer that. I can't answer that. No. Thumbs up. That's the starting price. That's the starting price. Perfect. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Supervisor Swan, second time. I may just briefly. I would say yes. That is the starting point. But you've made a you made a further effort um, to be in compliance with the changes by getting the appraisal. Okay, that's a baseline, and that's something you can fall back to in court or whatever if you need to, and um, all these costs for the appraisals can be set off against any proceeds, you know, that are over and above the obligations in the sale of the home. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Not hearing any other discussion. We're voting on the amendment now. Those of you that are in favor of the amendment, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. So the amendment passed. Now we'll go back to the regular um, uh, 13 there, approved values of the remnants tax foreclosure properties for auction with uh, new amendments put in. Do we have a motion? Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstain. Carried with one abstention. Business items, resolutions, and ordinances. Better get my glasses out now. Are you ready, Julie? 
Got your two minute thing ready? <laughs> Got your gal ready? Number one, requesting the state of Wisconsin in its 2025-27 state biennial budget provide state funding to cover the full non-federal share of medical assistance, CSP, and crisis service. Um, they, who had that? Legislative? Who? Okay, and that is uh, Ralph. Supervisor Harrison. Zero six zero dash one one two zero two four requesting the state of Wisconsin in its 2025 27 state by now uh, budget provide state funding to cover the full non federal share of medical assistance CSP and crisis services Second. and seconded by Stafford discussion Discussion. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carried. Number two, supporting Wisconsin Senate Bill 916 related to refuge settlement. Um, I believe it goes to Vice Chairman Ferry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval of 061, Resolution 061, 11 20 24. Second. Seconded by Hansen. Any discussion? Supervisor Ponzer. Yes. Okay, the mics do work. Yes, if you read on that, we're voting on a bill that has already been vetoed by the governor. So, I'm thinking this is a waste of time. So instead of half of us arguing if the glass is full, the other half yelling the glass is empty, there's no glass here. There, we're, we're voting on something that's non-existent. And the caveat added on there for future, I'm not going to vote for anything that I can't read in front of me. So therefore, I will be voting this down. Thank you. Any other discussion? Supervisor Schellinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will also be voting against this. I want to note that the supporting material for this, uh, this resolution is, is, is wrong. It lists the committee vote as 12-0. Uh, I'm, I'm certain that I voted against it. I'm certain that there were others that voted against it as well. Um, so people should disregard that and understand that this was not uh, anywhere near a unanimous vote by the Legislative Committee. Um, Senate Bill 9, 916 would require our county executive to notify every single municipality leader within 100 miles of Winnebago County if a refugee was intended to be resettled uh, in, uh, in Oshkosh. Um, and if you draw a circle with a 100-mile radius on it, you're going to find that there are communities in Michigan and Illinois and uh, almost to Minnesota that we would be asking our county executive to contact. And that's county board, that's a county, that's also municipalities. So every town, every village, every city would have to be notified by our county executive. Uh, there are already processes uh, for, for local notification that the federal government sets out. You can read about those in the veto. Uh, message that uh, Supervisor Ponzer um, referenced, but uh, this uh, this should be voted voted down. It's unnecessary. Uh, thank you very much. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to be voting for this resolution. I think there's many many case studies in the last year or two regarding the impact of of surprise refugee settlements that occur in communities. We owe it to our constituents when there's a giant demand put on schools, police, housing, etc. The more advanced notice, the better. There's nothing to lose by passing this resolution suggesting that, again, whether the governor vetoed or not, that we as a county believe advance warning is important. And that's really what this says here. So I'm uh, encouraged voting for the resolution. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? 
Not seeing anyone else, I think we'll do it by uh, machine. <laughs> oh, you're slow? Okay. <laughs> Supervisor Hancock Cook. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Egan, and I apologize for my slowness. Um, I, I was in the legislative um, discussion about this, the legislative meeting, um, and as Mr. Schellinger said, I also did not vote for this um, in favor. I am concerned that we um, conflate refugees with illegal immigrants, asylum seekers, all of that other stuff. And if you look at the actual number of refugees being resettled in, the, in Wisconsin, the number is not high. It's not busloads full of people. Um, and so I think that it's good for us to be well informed about what a refugee is versus other non-citizens um, coming into our areas. So I want you to just be clear on that. That, that this is talking about refugees, it's not a ton of people, but it's not the inundation that we're concerned that, that many people might be concerned about. Um, so I just want to be clear, clear on that, what a refugee is and how, how, what the numbers might really be. Anyone else? Supervisor Patterson. <coughs> Okay, thank you. So I, I just want to throw a couple things out there. Um, I was actually stationed at Fort McCoy when 24,000 Afghan refugees showed up there. They were expected to have 12,000 refugees, and that number doubled very quickly. And the chaos that ensued um, on just on that military base alone was insane. I think that if you're looking at a compassionate response to some of this, I think a heads up and a lead notice would be a very good idea to provide communities of any size that you're going to have some unexpected people showing up. Otherwise, they just show up on the doorstep where? So I, I think that that's part of the thing, too, that if you really want to look at a compassionate response to this thing, I think that uh, the, the number of communities that could possibly be affected, be uh, informed in advance, would be a good thing, and I'll be voting for this. Thank you. Anyone else? Who? Supervisor O'Brien. Thank you, Chairman. So. Yeah, I was just, um, I would, I guess I would like to hear um, uh, Executive Damel's uh, response. Like what, like how would this, would this uh, be, how would this be incumbent upon you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, not, it's not real clear, yeah. Executive Damel won't come up here. He's already talked. Okay. Okay, yeah. Not thanks. that he wouldn't like to. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Burrow, second time. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I just do want to add, you know, what we hear from the federal government may be different than the reality. Uh, for example, I know of, of cases that are close to my district of two apartment buildings that have been chock full of Somalian refugees. It doesn't matter where they're from, but they were brought in. Now people are being displaced. The rents are being increased. This does have an impact on the infrastructure of our county. And the more advanced notice we have, coming back to what Supervisor Patterson said, the better we can be as far as serving both our constituents and any newcomers we have. So again, ask for support of the resolution. Thank you. Supervisor Halber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I wanted to make a couple of comments on this. First, I heard a supervisor say that he was going to be voting for it whether or not the governor was going to veto it. It has already been vetoed. Um, the second thing is, is I want to hear from the people who have to put in the legwork to, um, to make, these, make these notifications happen, how this is going to impact your job, how this is going to impact um, our staffing how this is going to impact our feasibility of the county and how much more we need to budget for this. Um, has there been a feasibility study done to see how this is going to impact our taxpayers? As well as if we are giving notice to other counties and within a hundred mile radius, other cities, other towns, who's giving that notice to us when they're coming? Why are we doing the legwork for people if not everyone is on board? Um, I, I would desperately like to see how this is going to actually impact us to implement before voting on it. Thank you. Hmm? 
Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I just want to comment going through a lot of the things that have been said and um, as having been on the Oshkosh City Planning Commission, understanding with the refugees coming into Oshkosh because of when we had the uh, passing of the um, Akhmadiyya uh, Mosque, which is over by uh, Oshkosh West High School, and um, the impact on the area is exactly why you want to let them know that the veto was the wrong decision on this because we do deserve a heads up because of the exact reasons that Mr. Halber was talking about, the impact on the community. If they can just throw uh, the refugees here and say, you deal with them without any advance notice, that puts us behind the eight ball. That means that we can't properly take care of them. We can't properly take care of the county uh, constituents. It's just uh, throwing a bunch of people in the area and saying, well, it's yours to take care of without any forewarning. This isn't binding legislation. This is saying that we want a heads up. So I will definitely be supporting this. Thank you. Supervisor Holt. It is my understanding that we already have that heads up as a county. Uh, it is my understanding also after reading this resolution that it is more than us getting a heads up. This is giving a heads up to um, places outside of Winnebago County, which exceeds the jurisdiction and likely the impact. I will be voting against this resolution. Supervisor Buck. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. L looking at the, uh, the fiscal note on here, I think this was um, alluded to earlier that I, I don't really believe that there's a database um, currently created of a 100-mile radius of every county clerk, city clerk, town clerk, uh, village clerk. Um, so, you know, just not having that information on there, I, I think just putting that together, if, you know, I don't, I, I don't think anybody from the uh, county department can speak on that, but just, just putting that together, um, I think would be quite costly and, and, and a time constraint. So with that, um, you know, that, that, that should be added to this resolution. It's, since it's not in there, I won't be voting for this. Thank you. Well, we had you up on the screen right there, but now we don't. There we go. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree, the 100-mile radius is quite extensive. Um, I would like to amend line 25. Uh, instead of 100-mile radius, I'd like to change that to 25-mile radius, which should get us through Winnebago County. And I would like a second, if anyone's brave enough. Seconded by... Who seconded it? Hanson. Hanson. Okay. Motion made Hanson. Now we're just on the discussion on this part, the amendment. Is all that we're on is just on the amendment. So we're going from what it was 100, now the amendment is to, amendment is to go down to 25. So. Cut that back up. All kinds of computers and we got to work back and forth. Supervisor Powers, just on the amendment. Supervisor Howard, uh, Pam, uh, excuse me, Hanson on the amendment. Uh, the amendment. <coughs> Supervisor Schellinger on the amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, appreciate the, the the intention of the amendment. I think it's um, uh, doesn't really doesn't really address the concern because. The 100 mile radius is uh, is is written in the se is in Senate Bill 916. So the uh, the amendment changing the whereas clause doesn't really address the actual concern, which is that the Senate bill we're being asked to support specifically enumerates that 100 mile radius. So we should vote against the amendment and then against the resolution. Supervisor Albrecht, on the amendment. Okay. I'll wait until okay. that vote is taken. Thank okay. you. It's okay. We'll get it. We're trying to get it all down pat here. 
Supervisor Ponzer on the amendment. Yes. This is what I was trying to get across. This bill is dead. Now we are sitting here arguing whether we're going to change a bill for the Senate and the Assembly. We don't even have that right. And again, I'm going to say, vote this down. It's a dead bill. I believe I saw Supervisor Hansen up. No question. Question, question is called and seconded. We're just on the amendment now. So the question has been called on the amendment. Once the amendment uh, has been called, there's no vote that can, we can't talk anymore. So, hmm? Stafford, yep, Stafford did. Okay, so the motion on the amendment is 25 miles. So that's what we're voting on now. Right, but I'm saying that's what, well, it's 25, that's. No, that's, no, just on calling the question. Right, but it's 25, so that's the amendment. You gotta go ahead and you gotta get, vote on whether the amendment's gonna pass or not. We're doing that first, we're doing it, we're voting on calling the question. And then we go to the 25. Okay, okay. No, nope. I was watching. That's why I wanted them up there. I knew exactly where the names were. Sued by a machine. So if you're supporting Senate Bill 916 related to refuge... That's what I was trying to say before. All those in favor of calling the question signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. nay. One nay. So the question has been called. Now we're to that point. Now we can go back to the 25th Amendment. Hmm? On the amendment. So uh, this is what it says right in front. Support Wisconsin State Bill 916 related to refuge settlement. Amend to change 100 mile radius to 25 mile. Vote yes if you're for changing it to 25. No if you're not. Hmm? I didn't know if I wanted to or not. Tim, do you want to vote? Did you vote? Did you save it? Just, it's good. She got it. She got it now. I'm going to put it up there. The rest. It failed 8242. So now we're back on the original one. I'll do that by machine two. Support Wisconsin State Bill 916 related to refuge settlement. If you're in favor of it, vote yes. If you're not, vote no. We're back on the bill now. That was, the amendment was voted down and everything. That was already done. Call the question. We did that. So we're back. Right. You're back to discussion here. Right. 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 Right, but don't, we've got to have discussion. That was my fault, it's got to be discussion first. So, and I remember Supervisor Albrecht said, I'll wait till we have the question. So, Supervisor Albrecht. Are we open to discussion? discussion? Yes, we're All open right. to discussion. In January coming up, I'm proudly celebrating the 100th anniversary of my father coming to this country as a refugee. Anybody else in the room? 
who may have a father or grandparents as refugees. He was 17 years old and he came by himself in January across the North Atlantic. Not the right time to come to America, all right? <laughs> he landed in Chicago and eventually found work in Chicago, working in the stockyards as a machinist, all right, for almost 30 years. During World War II, he proudly served the United States, keeping those machines running, slicing and dicing the meat to feed our soldiers and sailors across the world, okay? I think we need to remember something about the value of immigrants and the purpose they have in American society. And that's the story of my family 100 years ago. Thank you. Supervisor Hansen. For the question. Second. Motion made and seconded to call the question. Right. So all those in favor of calling the question signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. We'll call, it's been called. So now, so now you can vote on supporting Wisconsin State Bill, uh, Bill 916 related to refugee settlement. If you're in favor of it, vote yes. If you're not, vote no. Put it up there. And that failed because it has to be three quarters vote. So 15, 17, 2. I let three quarters, but. Ad advocating for impatient behavior health facility for Northern Wisconsin. Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move for approval of Resolution 062-11-2024. Seconded by Supervisor Hanson. And discussion. Any discussion? Any discussion? Do you have any? Not seeing any discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed say nay. Carried. Number four, request the Wisconsin State Legislator pass legislation to stop corruption for purchasing uh, single. Well, corporation, well, it is corruptions on some of it. <clears throat> From purchasing single family, single family homes. Vice Chairman Fari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with your permission, sir, I'd like to refer this to Supervisor Rachel Dowling, who is actually the sponsor of this uh, uh, resolution. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Chairman and Vice Chairman Fari. Um, I move to approve Resolution 63112024, request that the Wisconsin State Legislature pass legislation to stop corporations from purchasing single-family homes. Seconded by Stafford. Discussion. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Ch Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight I want to talk to you as a neighbor and as an advocate for our community's future, especially for those looking to buy a home in Winnebago County. Our housing market has changed drastically, and if we don't act, we risk pricing out not only our young families, but our retired community as well. We're seeing a dangerous trend. Corporations backed by private equity, groups like Blackstone, are buying up single family homes across our co county. And not just our county, 
but the entire state of Wisconsin and across the country as well. These purchases aren't providing affordable housing or contributing to our community. Instead, they're leaving homes vacant and driving up prices for everyone. Consider this. In Winnebago County, the average home price is $227,500. The average list price is now $299,000. A family trying to buy a $299,000 home with a $30,000 payment, down payment, would still face a monthly mortgage payment of $2,300. For a household earning the average income of $70,000, that's simply out of reach. And let's not forget our retired residents and empty nesters as well, many of whom lived on fixed incomes and may not be able to downsize due to these soaring costs and interest rates. I want to be very clear, though. I am not talking about our local landlords, our neighbors who own properties as LLCs. Our local landlords provide affordable rentals and live in our community. I'm worried about large corporations like Blackstone specifically. My concern is that with large corporations, they are buying up homes, leaving them empty, and driving up prices. By supporting this resolution, we're sending a clear message to the Wisconsin State Legislature. Stop corporations from taking over our neighborhoods. Let's protect our future of home ownership in Winnebago County so our children and grandchildren have a chance to live and thrive in our beautiful community. I just want to tell, because I know some of you are watching her time. She, we did, did go over the two minutes, but you get two two minutes. And so what I told the clerk to go ahead and have her start her second two minutes. So she was all right in her time. Uh, Rule 10.3, if you're introducing a resolution, you have three minutes. He was introducing. He asked if you may introduce it. So I went over. You got your time. You're the one that watches the clock all the time. So I'm just letting everyone know. <laughs> <laughs> so... That is why it happened. Any other discussion? There, was there a second on that? Oh, seconded by Supervisor Burrell. Any other discussion? Supervisor Frasetto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know that in her remarks, Supervisor Dowling mentioned that she was not referring to LLCs and other type of uh, maybe uh, single homeowners who are involved in Airbnb and, and whatnot. However, I'm just a little concerned with the ambiguity of referring to only corporations and not having any language in here specifically saying what we are not opposed to. Thank you. Supervisor Hancock Cook. Thank you, Chairman Egan. Um, and this um, particular resolution is the one that I was referring to when I looked at the packet as a whole. If you guys go and look at that packet as a whole, you will see, one moment I should have had this up, that pages 292 to 450 were the Wisconsin Housing Stats Monthly from 2007 to 2024. I love the way it is in here because you can choose to look at it. If you want to see that reference, it's wonderful in this doc, in the way that it is in your computer. But when you get the packet, you get page 292 to 450, whether you want it or not. I suspect we didn't examine that very closely. And I think that it would be interesting or it'd be a very good best practice for us to use references in those resolutions and in the packet as opposed to providing the entire document of 2007 to 2024 Wisconsin housing stats by county. The other data that was in there was screen grabs from articles with numerous addendums that were absolutely not pertaining to this information. Again, I think that we need to, we can clean up our work as we're providing this information so that we give what's pertinent and don't provide what may not be pertinent to the rest of this, the um, board. Thank you very much. Supervisor Swan, I think, was next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I sympathize with the intent of this resolution, but I'm dubious as, as to how you can 
prevent a particular entity from buying property. This is America, man. I mean, everything's for sale here. You know, uh, you can't just single someone out, whether it's an individual, a corporation, an LLC, a partnership, a real estate investment trust. You can't, you, you can't do that. And it's not going to pass, I don't think it'll pass constitutional muster. I'm not an attorney, but I know enough about constitutional law as a layperson, I think, to say, hey, this isn't going to work. You know, I, I sympathize with what these, what these uh, groups are, trying, are doing. They're, they're trying to find a safe haven asset that they can purchase and, and protect the assets of their, you know, private equity groups. Um, I think a better way to attack this might be to look at it from as a national security issue more than just, uh, you know, you have to pin these people down. Is there malintent here? Uh, you know, are they purchasing these properties up with some objective in mind, whether it be displacing property owners or opening up homes for as we spoke about two resolutions ago, refugees. You know, um, what, do they, what, what do they want to do here? You know, if there's malintent, I would suggest looking into this further and going on that angle, because if you can prove it's a national security risk, then you can attack it and probably win in court. Otherwise, you're going to get this thrown out of court so fast, you're, you know, you're going to have to, you're just not going to believe it, I think. This is just not going to fly, in my opinion. I'd like to hear the opinion of Corporation Council on this, but, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I know a little about real estate, and I just don't think you can keep anybody from buying property in this country. You know, unless you decide you don't want foreign corporations from buying property or you don't want foreign countries from buying property. We've seen China buy property near military bases. You know, that, that's one, that's a different matter. If you want to... I think you can prove that, but I don't think you can just wholly keep, keep a private equity group, a corporate private equity group, from buying uh, single-family homes. It's not, not going to work. Thank you. Supervisor Halber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as a co-sponsor of this bill, I would like to open it up um, to let people know that I, I – would like to hear your clarifying amendments to help uh, strengthen the wording of this, but to um, to address some of the points that some of the supervisors made about singling corporations out and uh, what the intent is. It's been proven that corporations are buying up houses to artificially inflate the housing market. I bought my house last year there's two houses sitting directly across from me, completely empty. There are two or three family homes each. More than 80% of the homes within a two block radius of my house are owned by corporations that are not even in Winnebago County. They're charging rent, taking money out of our county and not helping our citizens. Keeping these houses empty and on the market drives up the price of the surrounding rental properties. It, it's inflationary. It's not helpful. It is malintent. Um, in addition, it has been proven that uh, corporations use AI technology and PACs to push landlords in organizations to raise the rent at a steady and, and very equal pace throughout the whole country so that the inflation keeps happening and the rents just keep going up. It's keeping people from buying houses. I know when I bought my house um, last year, we fought for literally six straight months to purchase a home, any home. We put bids in on multiple homes that we've seen that were not even in the greatest of condition. And every single time that we were outbid or we were told we didn't get a listing, it was because someone paid over asking price as a first-time home buyer as a as a young american as a young person who doesn't have a lot of money um i think me and my husband together both make a little more than the seventy thousand median income here in the county um 
it would not have been possible for us to compete with investment groups and corporations who literally have billions of dollars to throw around. We are very lucky that we got to purchase a house, but not, not many people are that lucky. This bill is aimed at keeping our houses for our county citizen residents affordable and available and not just allowing corporations to snap up the inventory and ruin our housing market like they did in 2008. Thank you. Supervisor Holt. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the um, intention of this. I do agree that it would be difficult to pursue legally. Um, I'm not opposed to trying, frankly, but as an LLC owner, I think we need language in this resolution uh, that defines corporations. And I know it says corporations supported by private equity groups. If those are the only groups we're talking about, um, I would support it. My questions really are around how would you define a corporation? Uh, I think there's plenty of land uh, lords who, that's a weird term to me, but there's plenty of landlords who have really good intentions, live in the area, um, have no interest in raising rents beyond what is reasonable and fair. But I have recently met uh, people who are tenants of uh, duplexes who have out-of-state landlords who bought the property uh, after 30 years of one owner and then proceeded to raise the rental rates by 20-25% and out of reach for the people who are living in our community. So they had to go find um, rentals elsewhere. Uh, if our market can bear it, I guess to um, the point of Mr. Swan, I believe we should be looking at this from the standpoint of what it does for our community. But I also recognize that there's potential for us to have a difficult time legally uh, pursuing this. That's all. Supervisor Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have to agree with Mr. Swan's comments and how do you define these corporations? I currently have an S Corp and I have three LLCs. If you try to restrict it based on how many properties they can own, they'll just start another corporation and buy up the properties that they want. If you can only own 10 properties, they'll just buy them up. It is kind of America, it's a free marketplace Heck, what do we do next? Do we put a limit on how many quick trips can go up into communities? Because they do a great job and they've got a lot of places out there. If you're talking about the rents, I get bombarded on a regular basis by management groups that will come in and manage your rentals and they will get those rental rates up to the max that is out there and people are so desperate for a place to rent that the demand is what's driving the price and the management companies are certainly on top of exactly what the top dollar is you can get. So it's a, a big problem. I don't think this resolution solves the problem. Supervisor Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I first want to state that I unequiv unequivocally agree with the intent of this resolution. Um, I don't know, Supervisor Swan had asked the question of Corporation Council on Constitutionality. I wonder if Corporation Council, um, if I can suspend my time for a moment and have her comment if that's appropriate. <laughs> And the reason, one of the reasons that I asked th that question, um, you can go, I'm so sorry to the clerk's office, you can start my time. One of the reasons that I want to hear that from Corporation Council 
is because since this was discussed at legislative committee, I have had extensive conversations with um, like Lou Shear, um, Winnebago, um, here in Winnebago County. And I can tell you that the, the Realtors Association, the Landlords Association, and the corporations have an unbelievably strong presence in Madison that will sway opinions. This will be a dogfight. Um, yes, I'd be happy to answer it. Actually, uh, Supervisor Dowling and I had spoken about this probably for months. And when I researched it, because again, I do not look at policy, I look at legalities, I found Wisconsin statute 700.28, which says prohibiting unreasonable restrictions on alienation of property it says, in this section, political subdivision means a city, village, town, or county. And then it goes on to say, a political subdivision may not prohibit or unreasonably restrict a real property owner from alienating any interest in the real property. I read that to mean that Wisconsin statute is barring uh, a county from enacting this legislation. Now, in fairness, Supervisor Dowling reached out to Supervisor Gustafson. Supervisor Gustafson spoke to two attorneys in Madison in the legislature, is that correct? And they were of a different opinion. Surprise, surprise, you have a lot of different opinions from different attorneys. I had concerns about this, but Supervisor Dowling actually spoke to the attorneys, that is my understanding, and they said no, they thought they could go forward. But again, my concern was with STAT 700.28. But there are other attorneys who don't hold the same opinion I do. Thank you for the clarification. Again, I am going to support this, but um, from what I've, uh, what I've been able to research so far, this will be a fight in Madison. Um, and. I don't remember the supervisor that brought up, said something about intent. Intent, is, as corporation counsel can tell you, intent in court is next to impossible to define. Um, so again, I'm going to support, but this is going to be a, a hard fight. I'm not gonna back away from the fight, but it's going to be a hard fight. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am going to support this resolution as well. Um, I'm not concerned about whether, whether there's any legality to it or whether there's a, it's a constitutional problem with it. No one is going to come back to the Winnebago County Board of Supervisors and sue us because we pass this. What this does is we're requesting the Wisconsin State Legislature. We're letting them know we're concerned about this in our community, in our county, and we want them to step up and, and pass legislation to protect us. It's not about uh, whether we're going to have to fight this thing in courts or, or constitutionally. Let the legislature know we care about this. We care about having property available for sale to people in our community who want to be able to own something and live here and work here and pay taxes here and go to school here. Thank you. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if, I, if I could ask Marianne just one question of you real quick. This will only take a moment if she hears me. This will be quick, this will be quick. You can just step right up to the mic. This, go ahead, go ahead, what's your question? Keep going. This would, be, this would be considered a, this would not be considered a binding resolution. This would be um, an advisory resolution. Am I correct? Yeah, it, so it as, basically says, if you can read lines 44 through 47, a copy of the resolution be forwarded to the delegations Governor Evers, Wisconsin Counties, Wisconsin Counties Association, and the National Association of Counties. So basically, it's saying, here you go, this is what Winnebago County Board of Supervisors thinks. Okay, thank you. I just wanted that clarified for anybody who wasn't aware. This is not binding. This, this, is, this is advising the state legislature that we want something done. Supervisor Powers took a little bit of my, my steam with, with her comments, but it, it made me feel better hearing that one of, that Supervisor Gustafson, who is our local um, state assemblyman that serves on this county board, is one of the 
people who submitted this, and he is the one who's looking into it, what they can do at the state level. And I think we're doing our due diligence by voting for this because we are saying, we're not saying that it has to be written exactly how we have it written. We're saying figure this out down there because there's a problem. So I will wholeheartedly be supporting this. Thank you. Supervisor Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two things I look at <clears throat> when I voted for this on the Ledge Committee. First of all, uh, the intent. And the second thing is that, as has been indicated, Nate, our uh, local legislator, uh, co-signed this. To me, that, that carries a lot of weight. <clears throat> and I would mimic the comments by Supervisor Powers. Uh, we're, we're simply suggesting to the legislature maybe you should do something about this. So I, I agree and I certainly will support it. Thank you. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to propose an amendment on line nine after United States uh, semicolon, the intent of which may constitute malintent and or pose a national security risk. Something to that effect on the intent, the intent of which may constitute malfeasance and or a national security risk. I have a second. And that dies for a lack of a second. Very well. Okay. Supervisor Patterson. I, uh, I just want to throw out there that I, I think that we are justified in being concerned about this. I, I think that this is a big issue potentially a national security issue when you're looking at how many people are either homeless or about to be because of these rising costs. But I just want to share with you something that I came across. Um, about 15 years ago, I was in Korea, and Korea was facing a very similar type situation where you're looking at a population of about 35 million people crammed into a footprint about the size of Wisconsin. And if you're familiar at all, it, it, most of Korea has to deal with just having condos. There are very few homes, and they felt the need to put this restriction because, again, corporations were buying up properties and skyrocketing the value of these properties, making it next to impossible. They actually passed legislation that forbade anybody to have more than two, period, regardless of status, whether it was a corporation or anything else. They, they, they capped it out because they saw that this problem was so bad. And uh, to be honest with you, in our little footprint here, I'm starting to see the beginnings of that type of issue. So I, I think that we are appropriate in being concerned about this, about what the future could hold. I'd be supporting this. Thank you. Supervisor Halber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me just point out to you guys uh, one thing, well, a couple of things, but one of the more important things is this is just a small piece to the puzzle. This, this is one step in the fight. We as a county take this step, and it helps other smaller municipalities take those steps to show our state what we are looking for, to show our country what we are looking for. And to show the intent behind this, let me just quote the usafacts.org government, or the usafacts.org website. There were Six hundred and fifty three thousand one hundred and four homeless Americans in two thousand twenty two and over fifteen million vacant homes. We do not have a housing crisis because we don't have housing. We have a housing crisis because corporations are stealing the houses and keeping them keeping us from them. We have plenty of houses to go around. We have enough houses in America for every person to have more than two. We need to keep these corporations and their greedy investment portfolios away from our single family homes so that people who want to buy a house can have one. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Second Mr. Time. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I really appreciate the discussion tonight. My parents were landlords, um, so growing up, I understand how important it is um, to have that as a second business or something you do on the side or even a full-time business to make income for your family. I get it. That's not who we're going after here. Um, I say that right in the resolution. So it's clearly defined. We are talking about corporations that are backed by private funding equity groups. Um, I do understand the concern around Wisconsin State Statute 728 as well. When I talked to the lawyers down in Madison, they again reassured me that the way that this resolution is written is we're just asking the Wisconsin State Legislature to do something about it, to look into this. If Wisconsin State Statute 728 is truly protecting corporations and not our Wisconsin residents, that's what needs to change. We should not have statutes that protect corporations over the people who live here. Thank you. Miller? Which Miller? Which one? Supervisor Howard Miller. Had to get the right Miller. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I certainly do understand the, the reason for this, um, but I have some questions and one group of people that has not been addressed this evening is the seller of the property. Now, if you restrict the people who can buy it, you're hurting the property seller. You know, we have always, all evening we've been talking about the poor buyers, but what about that seller that has now uh, lost some of his potential buyers and has lost some of the value of his property. That's, that's troublesome to me. Thank you. Supervisor Cox. I think this, uh, this resolution is right on the money. I have a daughter who cannot find <clears throat> a place to live at a reasonable price point living in Colorado. I understand what's going on with the corporations and the various sellers and the various buyers in getting involved and in losing their homes or the, the owners losing their homes to large, large uh, companies or the corporations that are running mega uh, investments in, in uh, apartment buildings and just running the prices right up the, you know, right up the flagpole. I would vote for this, and I think we need to call a question at this point. Second, Powers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion is made and seconded to call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Suppose say nay. Nay. The, the ayes have it. The question has been called. So at this time, we will vote on uh, request the request the Wisconsin State Le uh, Legislature pass legislation stop corporations from purchasing single family homes. Vote yes if you're in favor of it, and no if you're not. Well, you're still voting. I should have said this um, uh, earlier in my report, and I forgot to. I had um, some other stuff up here that says um, that I should remind all of you supervisors for your RSVPs for the Christmas party by Monday, December 2nd. So that in your money, in case you didn't get one, uh, we do have some extra invitations up here. Um, so, and it's going to be at Fin and Feather this year. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you, if anyone's interested from your area, 
I know um, uh, Supervisor Hintz has already got some things. If you want to go out and get some prizes to give out, that's great. It started last year because uh, it got so much money that we used to go out and buy stuff and that was some of the money that was put in, but it just got so outrageous. So I know some of them went and got different cert uh, gift certificates or different things like that, and we gave them out. So if you'd like to get something from your district, fine. I'm not saying you have to, but then they'll be given out as drawings at the Christmas party. So, But if you plan on coming, they have to have it in by December 2nd into the clerk's office. Thank you. Did it pass? Oh, it passed. I was talking. I wasn't listening. Amend Rule 22.3 of the Rules of Winnebago County Board, Vice Chairman Fari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of Resolution 064-11-2024. Seconded, so Supervisor thank, Wise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May I speak on the resolution? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say all of you were sent uh, uh, through, I believe, the email by the clerk, a copy of a document from May of 2022. During that time frame is when the administration of this county uh, basically t decided to set parameters to start reviewing agendas, supporting documents, etc. As of, I think it was May of this year, we have full Im implementation of the Civic Plus. And I'm sure many of the committee chairmen, perhaps committee, mem committee members, are aware of the problems we have encountered since. And perhaps some of the co-sponsors would like to speak to that. Uh, my request is uh, that Hopefully we will not refer this back to committee. I think it's very important that we decide this resolution tonight. Uh, and it requires a two-thirds vote. I'm hopeful and that we can far surpass two-thirds to correct this problem. Now let me explain specifically what I've done here. If you look at 8.3 of the county board rules, that defines how we get our agendas and the packets and when they're mailed out. This simply duplicates that language because the current language does not require that they be sent out within that seven day time frame, which is causing all the problems in my opinion. So this will clarify that and hopefully correct it. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote, please. Yes. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask Vice Chair Fari whether he considered um, consortiums because we have a consortium in the UWO Fox Cities Campus Board of Trustees with Outagamie County. So, you know, what do we do there? <laughs> indicates committees, commission boards. Um, Marianne, could you respond to that? Okay, good. I'd rather not do it anyway. Yeah. Um, I would just basically echo what Vice Chair Farr is saying. Your rules do not reference, okay. and I'm quickly looking, but as I recall, they don't reference consortiums or task forces, committees, commissions, or boards. Supervisor Bender. I'd just like to say the, the last couple of months since we've been doing this, it, it's been a, a struggle at the UW getting our agenda posted. And before that, I always approved the agenda before it was put online. The last two months, I have not got the agenda approved. And all of a sudden, I look, it's online. So that in itself is upsetting to me. You know, it's taken away the, the job of the chairman because it is his job to basically set up the agenda and approve the agenda, and then it gets put online for the, the meeting. But I, I don't want to cancel it because it, it's like we've already had so many meetings canceled this month. The Highway Committee canceled, uh, Solid Waste canceled. There, there was like five meetings. Parkview, I was watching for their agenda because 
I'm interested in Parkview. I'm interested in solid waste. There's things on there that I have concerns on. So I start checking about seven days in advance, and nothing ever happens. You know, I don't know if it, you know, you shouldn't be. There's nothing on the agenda. We just passed the budget. You know, everybody's got all kinds of money to spend on new projects, and I would think they would be talking about it. So there's many things that need to be accomplished, you know, and I would think if I was a citizen that we went to a salary, and now all of a sudden we don't have any meetings. What is that telling the citizens of Winnebago County that when you got paid 50 or $75, you wanted to go to a meeting, and now because you get a $500 per diem, you cancel all the meetings? I think it's wrong, and I think we need to go back to the way we were, you know, basically taking pride in and making sure we attend our meetings and get stuff accomplished as a committee. Thank you. Anyone else? Supervisor Halber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a question about the wording in this, uh, the red portion, line 17, 16 and 17. It says the agenda, along with the appropriate attachments, shall be sent, emailed, electronically posted, accessible, or otherwise deposited for delivery at least seven days before the committee, et cetera. Um, shouldn't that be and for those who don't receive the electronic um, packets because otherwise it's just saying you can just post them seven days and then send the packet by mail two days thank you vice chairman fiery mr chairman do would you happen to have the rules with you sir if you look at rule 8.3 which governs the require agenda items and everything for this county board meeting tonight and i assume everybody's getting their packet mine are mailed out thank you uh at least seven days prior to the meeting this language is exactly the same as 8.3 there's no difference so if, if you were to argue that point it would be that you would also want to change 8.3 and we might want to look at that later on down the day, but I, but I think the language here, sufficient to 8.3, certainly makes the same point and the same requirement. Existing rule, what's the purpose? Uh, but the question was, well, if we could include the word and instead of or, because I, Wait a minute. One at a time. Supervisor Halber. I just said the question was if we could put the word and in place of or because I have elected to get paper documents um, and though the posting for the agenda might have been online seven days in advance, I didn't receive my agenda packet until today because it wasn't mailed. So if this goes to stand the way it is with or, it's saying people who ask for paper packets could get theirs the day before or the day of the meeting as long as it's posted online in seven days. Uh, also through this uh, line 16, the agenda, along with the appropriate attachments. Shall, not may, shall be sent emailed electronically posted uh i believe i duplicated 8.3 oh i th i see in other words we omitted a word The way this is read would state, the agenda along with appropriate attachments shall be sent or emailed or electronically posted or accessible or otherwise deposited for delivery at least seven days. If you wrote the word and in the place of or. Chairman got or Supervisor got. Correct. 
It does, because then that means that every place that there's a comma has to also happen. So that would say that you have to attach, that they have to be sent and emailed and electronically posted and accessible and deposited for delivery. When you have a set of commas in a sentence and you use the word or, you're saying or to each individual item. And if you have the word and, you're saying and to each individual item. Have an opinion on that explanation? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do agree with Supervisor Halber's inter interpretation because right now the way it is, if you have or, it would suggest if you send um, an agenda and appropriate attachments by email uh, seven days before, you might not have to send a hard copy seven days before. So by putting, substituting and for or, the onus on, is on providing uh, this information in any form, be it electronic, email, accessible, hard copy, at least seven days. Thank you. Is that a friendly motion, sir? I'll certainly accept it. Thank you for that clarification. Is that acceptable to... You sure can. Huh? Supervisor Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I agree with the amendment um, as well. And also, just in case anyone has the thought, although I have not heard the discussion about sending this to the um, task force for rules, I'm going to say please don't. And the reason, and the reason is, is because in so passing this tonight, that. Um, makes it go into effect. The task force doesn't really conclude until May and we vote in June. So that, that is why I would respectfully ask that this be voted on tonight. I have one that's stolen. Right. Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, just uh, just to clarify, 8.3 deals with this body, 23 deals with commissions, committees, and boards. That's why we have them separate. Just so we're clear that I, I support the and, um, but that's why we have them in two different places, just so it's clear so people understand the distinction between them. Um, I also support, support this, and I think it's imperative that we do this, this action now and not wait. Uh, this is... A, this is a big issue, huge concern. The other th thought I'll just throw out there is, I appreciate the attachment that was sent for the 2022 resolution ordinance uh, submission procedure. It's great. My biggest disconnect though is, we're the body that deals with policy making. We are the ones who get to decide how this is ran. So I would recommend that we actually look at this as a body and say yes or no to this procedure that was outlined to us, and we decide how this goes forward. So I strongly uh, suggest that we as a body um, kind of codify this uh, as we go forward because this is our lane, and I want to make sure that we're driving in our lane. So some, some thought there. So thank you very much. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm voting in favor of this. Um, so as, as the, as the uh, chairperson for Parks and Rec, well, during this, this few months ago, we had to cancel two months in a row. Once because we had a uh, supervisor with a concussed child and a, another one with a sick baby. Um, the next time was because even though uh, my director and I had gone over an agenda, it was in the, in the uh, 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 Julie's office in plenty of time, it got bottled next someplace and did not get posted. I had to cancel. We had to cancel the meeting because the agenda wasn't out. It's getting bottled next someplace. This has to stop. We got to get this cleaned up and um, uh, get these things out in a timely manner. Thank you. Supervisor Howard Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I certainly do support this, this resolution uh, and the intent of it. 
uh, about getting these agendas out in a timely manner. Um, but I do have one question, and that is what happens if uh, an agenda is not posted in seven days. Does that mean the meeting cannot be held? And this is a little bit concerning to me um, because of uh, planning and zoning. Uh, we, we deal with issues, uh, CSMs, um, um, uh, changes in zoning, um, and things like that. And if that meeting doesn't occur, that delays that process for 30 days for the constituents of the county. And, and that's concerning to me. Thank you. I can tell you that if the agenda is not posted, there should not be a meeting. Just want to let you know. What, no matter what committee it is or even this one. I know I sat on that, so I know that it can be a problem. Yeah, that's problematic. Supervisor Buck. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to the, the chairman and, the, and Supervisor Fari for bringing this, this forward. It, I, I do have one question, and if you would, Mr. Uh, chairman. Um, I, we have some long-tenured supervisors uh, on this board, and I'm just going to direct my questions to Supervisor Fari. Has this been something that has been a, a problem in the past uh, on your, I don't want to say long tenure on the county board, but your tenure on the county board? Thank you. Question and it's certainly all right. Uh, I'm the old guy on the board, and that's pretty much uh, simple to see. Uh, we had not run into this problem during the 21 years since 2002 that I've been on this board. It apparently started to occur, and I got to thank Supervisor Cox for providing that information. During the month of May 2022, with a meeting of all the directors. That is my understanding of it. Might have responded to Mr. Miller's comment, Mr. Chairman. I've got two in the new we'll be able okay. to. Supervisor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hold in my hand the procedure, the submission of procedure that goes along with this rule. This rule is set up. <clears throat> to try to eliminate a whole lot of reviews of various people that don't belong in the process. The process belongs to the chairman of each committee, to the chairman of the board, and the people that he invites in, which would be the clerk and Mary Ann our corporate counsel. It does not include a review every time you turn around from the executive. The executive does not belong in the loop. The executive does get to talk with their directors to find out what's going on, but they do not get involved with, and I'm talking about the assistant executive and the executive they do not get involved with making out the agenda they are and they're reviewing it they review an agenda by request they review an agenda item report they review an agenda for the strategy to advance an item that item report came out when Mr. Dommel came to become the executive. We did not have an item report before that. We were able to work directly with the resolutions as they came in. That has held up an awful lot of the process. On top of that, reviewing each person's agenda or reviewing the lines that are coming out through finance and, and uh, personnel, our p &F, okay? Just a second. I'm He's just about done. 
the resolution doesn't have anything to do with the chain of command, but the pr procedure in getting getting the getting the uh, agenda out on time does have to do with the procedure. So the two things are locked together. And I would approve. I would approve of Mr. Halbert's. Uh, time idea. is up, Supervisor Cox. Time is up. Sorry. We're going to finish our speakers first because Vice Chairman Fari also wants to respond. Supervisor Weiss. Is it possible that I can defer my time to Marianne? You can ask her to speak. Sure. You know, I'd like to ask her to speak on this issue. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. In case you didn't hear, Supervisor Weiss is relinquishing his two minutes to Corporation Council. Two Thank minutes. you. And, and just for a clarification, and I think all of you have heard this from me, but the chairs of the committees, the chair of the county board controls the agenda. As you've heard, there are agenda item reports that were put together um, and initiated by our current county executive. As you all know, all department heads have to, their boss is the county executive, all right? So they report to the county executive and they, basically connect with the county executive to see what their boss believes is, is in the interest of, of the county. When the agenda item reports are put together, they are submitted to all of the chairs and there is no question. The chairs have the ultimate say in terms of whether an item will go forward or not. I mean, again, the carve out is, as you know in your board rules, Every supervisor has a right to bring forward a resolution on his or her own, which is the example of resolution 064-11-2024. Um, that's all I wanted to clarify. That, in fact, the department head's boss is, is the county executive. So. Supervisor Stafford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just uh, two quick comments. The first is the rules actually do not state that if we don't follow the rule that we can't have the meeting other than in state statute. So there really is no remedy. And, and actually most of our rules, I mean, this is the secret here. Most of our rules really don't have a remedy for noncompliance. They really don't, unless they're state statute. So we should be aware of that. So if that's something that we feel like we should do, then we should put it in the rule. But right now, it just says, if you don't, then you're going to get a talking to. I mean, that's basically what it is. And that might be what we want, but we should all understand that. And the second is, I just, I feel like I do have to say, I do appreciate the, um, the item reports. Uh, one of the things that I struggled with when I first was on the board is the lack of information and depth of consideration that we had on these resolutions that seem to go on and on and on and on. So I think there's some value in that. With that said, I think this board has to be driving the bus at the same time. But we have to work with the administration. We, we have to consider that point of view because as good um, governance goes, we have to understand how this thing is going to work and how this thing is going to be enacted. For someone who like, does this for a living, I'm saying that you have to understand the implications of which you are trying to, uh, to drive, because if you don't, you're going to fail. So you do have to consider it, but at the same time, I think we have to be the ones who drive this bus and consider those points of views relative to the administration. Thank you. Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I might respond to Supervisor Miller's uh, concerns. Uh, first of all, if the agenda by the P&Z Department is not following the county board rule, that is a violation of county board rule, that does not prevent you from posting the agenda. State law, Chapter 19, requires 24 hours. As long as you're meeting that deadline, uh, you certainly can do that. The thing is, if you're doing that all the time, habitually violating the rule, 
that should be more of a concern. But if it comes up occasionally, you got an issue, stay within the law. That is your guiding principle. Uh, once again, I ask the clerk to read back the resolution as amended, please. Did you want to speak anymore, Supervisor Wise? She had a few minutes left. Okay. I am definitely going to support this. I believe in it wholeheartedly, but I'm going to ask one question. I want you all to think about it. What if it don't happen? What's going to be the consequences and who are you going to look at? You're going to look at the county executive? They're elected. You're going to look at the clerk? She's elected. You're going to look at Mary Ann? Has to be the county executive and us to get rid of her. So just think about that. Like I said, I'm definitely going to support this, but just think if something ever happens, what can be the consequences and who are you going to point your finger at? Because there's been a lot of finger pointing lately, and what's going to happen? Could I just make one point of clarification? So with the way this rule is written, it specifically says the agenda and attachments shall be sent at least seven days before the actual meeting. If there is an item that is not on the agenda, then it cannot be addressed. I know uh, Supervisor Fari referenced state statute, but if you adopt this, this is what is going to have to govern. State statute allows an agenda to be posted 24 hours before a meeting and an emergency up to two hours before a meeting. But you as a body, if you adopt this, this will trump that state law because you're going to be following this. Supervisor Halber. Second time, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that part of what Marianne was going to say was what I was going to say. Any rule that we make that is stricter than state law will abide will govern um, secondly I think what we're gonna find as a body is that there's a lot of finger pointing but what we're actually gonna find out about if we implement this rule or not is going to be last-minute submissions and how they're handled when it comes to getting things on the agenda is really what the holdup is um, and this this means that you have to be on top of things as as someone who wants to submit something to the agenda you have to get it in more than seven days in advance of a meeting because now it has to be vetted through you know corporation council it has to be approved by the chairperson to get put on the uh, agenda and then it actually has to be posted and put out in seven days so this is just going to push up your deadlines for getting those submissions in it, it doesn't actually change the process of getting things put on or or who can look at what and who can add things all it does is put more of a time crunch on you to submit things to an agenda so I would love to see this pass because I think that's where the majority of our holdup is and I I wholeheartedly believe that many of the other problems that were mentioned today are not as big of a problem as we think they are but those late submissions, I do believe, are the bulk of our problem, and this will solve them. Thank you. Supervisor Gabbert. I'll make this quick, but I've been here a long time, not as long as Supervisor Fari. I have never, ever seen a mess like this. And it, it seemed to come to aviation first, which I'm chairman of, and I took it personally. Um, that we couldn't get our agenda posted. And the director and I worked very closely on getting the agenda put together. Um, but I have the final say. But I didn't have the final say because everything was snagged up with the agenda items. I never saw the agenda items until I got the packet for the meeting. I was never in the loop that is what's disturbing to me we have lost and I'll use the word transparency and then I find out other people had to cancel meetings because they didn't get the agendas so I called supervisor Cox supervisor Egan and I said 
who's in charge of this agenda? And I was, it was verified that the chairman of the committee. So this, having this race to get these documents in, but to have them looked at by people that really never looked at them before, you have all your directors who you hire to put in charge of departments and now you're second guessing them. So what was happening from my perspective, we're not getting anything done. We just cancel a meeting. If you've been watching the meetings in the last four, five, six months, we have more meetings canceled than I've ever seen before in my life. I understand if there's something where the director is gone, you reschedule, the flow is gone. So from my perspective, I'm gonna vote for this because I think we need to go back to where we were before and we can put some of the burden on the departments like planning and zoning, but Supervisor Miller was correct. If we miss one of those meetings by not having something posted, the constituent who's trying to follow a pattern of dates, times, they're hurt by this. They could be backlogged three to six months by getting something done that they're trying to do in this county. That isn't fair. So I don't know how that's gonna work, but it always worked in the past. We always got the stuff posted. So my key here is let's be transparent. Let's move forward. Let's have our meetings for the committees. We're all on committees. Um, and we need to move forward to get things resolved in the county. So uh, that's my take on it, just from being on this board a long time. What we have right now is not working. Thank you. Supervisor Bureau. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, certainly, again, as many uh, supervisors stated, this truly empowers the chairman. Uh, it gets it working better from a flow perspective. I really have a question for Supervisor Fari and perhaps the legal counsel. At, in row 18, where it's F after a board meeting, do we need some type of escape clause in case of an emergency or something because of the seven days becomes the standard versus 24 hours in advance? And maybe you could talk about historically, I mean, do you need the flexibility as chairman to be able to insert an item if it's deemed an emergency of some sort? Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you. Uh, to respond to your question from my personal point of view, and I'm dealing with the Land Conservation Committee, if there was an issue that could be explained why the rule is not being followed, and let's say it's within an appropriate time frame, let's say six days instead of seven or something like that, I would assume the responsibility as chairman and responsible to the county board chairman and legal counsel to go ahead and approve that meeting. So in my opinion, the duty and the responsibility if, if you're a chairperson of a committee is quite heavy, but that's certainly the position I would take. However, I might add, if that's being delayed because of an administrative function I would object to it, and I might even cancel the meeting myself because they're not following the rules. That simple. Um, and I would disagree with Vice Chair Fari because the word shall means it shall be done. I mean, that's how I read it. Um, and in terms of if you want to, a carve out, a carve out would give you wiggle room. But this is not my legislation. This is yours. Supervisor Locks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was just going to go after the same thing. I think we need to have some kind of a carve out um, for an emergency. Because it also applies to this board. And what if the, an emergency happens? in Menasha and we need to address it right away and we don't have a carve out for that. Um, but I don't feel comfortable making an amendment. Uh, I'm sorry. Again, this does 
not have to do with committee. This has to do with the board. Yeah. And we do have a carve out for board in 8.4. It talks about after the agenda has been mailed or posted, an item may be added in an amended agenda sent out only if there would be a negative monetary impact to the county if it waited until the next meeting of the county board. If waiting until the next county board meeting would not negatively impact the county, the item must wait until the next meeting. So at least for county board, the carve out is if you're hurting the county negatively, then there's an exception. But again, as Vice Chair Fari noted, this is not, this is for committees, basically, or actually supervisor Stafford referenced, I think. This is for committees versus the boards, yeah. Supervisor Cox, you're not in order. Next names. Yes. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and and Mary Ann, I have I actually have something to ask you that um, about this then because. Um, my meeting for facilities and property management of which I am the chairman of um, that we have tomorrow we I have made the decision to amend at f about 4 30 p.m. on Monday to add another item to it would I be able to do that if we pass this no. No. Not the way I it. and and what would the repercussions be of I mean, other than not being able to add any, something to it, I mean, if I were to, what would happen? I, I'm trying, I'm just, you understand why I'm asking. Yeah. You mean, should I call the sheriff and have you arrested? Is that, I mean, well, I, I, <laughs> well, or, or, is the, or is the whole meeting, or do, or do we go through the motions of having the meeting, and then we're told afterwards it's all null and void because we were out of order? I mean, I guess that, that I think that's an answer that we would all like to have. Yeah, well, it really, well, first of all, the way I'm reading this, because it says shall, you do not have any room to say, to do something um, less than seven days before the committee meeting. Now, I will tell you, and I'm going to try to find where it is. There is reference. Yeah. <laughs> You have a suspension of rules category in your um, county board rules that talks about certain rules may be suspended by two thirds vote of members present, uh, except certain rules which are not suspendable. Um, but again, going back, this is committee, mm -hmm. and the way I read it, you don't have the luxury, if your meeting was on a Wednesday, of saying, you know what, on Monday, we want to add something. What you just have to do is say, okay, we'll have to wait until next month or in two weeks, however your meetings are. You can call a special meeting. What is information? Wouldn't that be considered an amended agenda, which would be for what is the difference between an amended agenda and this agenda because County board rules says seven days. Mm -hmm. There have been many times where we have published and then published an update via an amended agenda. Mm -hmm. okay. How is that different if? Well, that's different because if you have this rule in effect. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you decide to pass this resolution, you're not going to have the luxury of filing an amended agenda less than seven days before the meeting. Okay, with, with, that, with that information then, it's still my time, Mr. Cox. Um, with that information, how would you suggest we, word, we would come up with the wording to give us the leave, if, could we come up with wording for it, to amend this to give us leeway? In a, it, would we put it in an emergency situation? Would we put it in, in if the chairman deems necessary? I'm, Those I'm, are I'm, all possibilities. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come up with something that we can get out of this little rabbit hole that we're in right now. <laughs> um, do you want to put after board meeting unless the chair 
of the committee, commission, and or board deems otherwise? Again, this is, these are, right. these would be I, your rules. Yes, and I understand, and I'm kind of looking around the room to see if I'm getting any feedback if that works. Because if that's the case, then I will propose to amend it, and I hope you can have that again. <laughs> you didn't write it down? <laughs> <laughs> But I will put forward the motion to amend. So, second. motion has been made and seconded for the amendment. Just what happened, Vice Chairman Fari. Uh, uh, I will serve a support unit of unable members. Uh, and the wording at the line Yes. Per state statute, what we have to put on there, or just no, uh, just be amended? It's not. It's it's yeah. At, well, I know you're saying after seven days, within seven days of no, the meeting. No less than Are within seven put, days, but no less than 24 hours in advance. That would, that would I would propose that as a friendly then. So did you get that? Yes. Okay, and I go ahead. Definitely offer that as a friendly. So if, can you say the I... wording again? <sighs> Let, let's try. Okay, help me out, Chuck. Because you started amendment. it out. <laughs> that's going to be a friendly amendment, right? Yes. I think you said the agenda may be amended, no less, or no, may be amended less. Within seven days, but no less than 24 hours in advance. Wait, less than seven days. Within seven days. Within seven days. But no less than 24 hours in advance. But that's going against state statute. I thought the state statute was 24 hours. It can be up to two hours when there is an emergency. So, okay, within two hours if there's an emergency. Um, within, er, fo within seven days following state statute. I don't, you don't even need to reference that. I think you could just say the agenda may be amended within seven, within seven days okay. of the, the meeting uh, pending approval of the chairperson. That sounds great. <laughs> That's a friendly amendment. Supervisor Halber. Not a discussion for the amendment. <coughs> I had an amendment and a second is not a friendly amendment. The discussion is if we allow any sort of carve outs for this resolution, oh. you're undermining the entirety of the resolution because then that gives Every sure. chairperson who is already in charge of their agendas, the ability to wait until that 24 hour mark to finalize and post an agenda. Any carve out that is not emergency or 100% necessary undermines the entire integrity of this resolution. Thank you. say we post an agenda to meet the criteria of within the seven days but we know there's something else we want to add to it so we just go ahead and post the agenda with nothing on it but one thing and now we add seven eight things 24 hours before the meeting mm -hmm. you're undermining the entire point of this resolution by doing that and you're trying to find the constituents who have valid reasons for doing things coming in no, 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 no. not able to get them on the agenda no, 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 no. wait a minute We'll go back in order here. Supervisor Hints, want to finish up? Can, 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 we, can we get the, actually a, a, the entirety of the, I'm sorry, Marianne. Can we have the wording just so we all hear it, so we know what the friendly I, amendment I is? I think this is the wording that Vice Chair Fari and Supervisor Hints put forward. The agenda may be amended within seven days of the meeting pending approval of the chairperson. Thank you. That's what I wrote. I don't know if that's Thank right you. or not. Can we go back on the names now, please? Okay. 
Supervisor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to point out that uh, at 8.3 in the in the rules for the for the board, you have an ability to amend, provided that there is no financial financial imposition on the on the budget or on the on the um, on the board or on the on on the county board and no financial burden on the county with regard to the amendment if if otherwise you have some financial burden it has to go on to as an amendment so that would be in in terms of the board but if we can carry that forward to the committees 8.3 would work as an amend an amendment clause to be able to amend any agenda in the committees as the committees are using them can you follow what I'm getting I'm following you kind of <laughs> would that not would that not override or help this resolution along without having to make friendly amendments and amend the resolution itself I don't know I think your name's on there so well we 8.3 is available is it not Marianne she stepped out no I can hear her coming yeah Uh, really? I got a question for you, Marianne. Marianne? Yes. <laughs> could we not could we not use eight point three and repair it as a committee rule as well as a board rule? Um well, the only problem with that is that all of 8.0 is really geared to the county board meetings. Because you say 8.1, under the direction of the county board chair, the county clerk with the help of me, or council, <laughs> is authorized to prepare a written agenda for each meeting of the county board, right? Huh. And then 8.2, again, as Supervisor Stafford referenced, 8 is really directed at county board and then as you go down to 20s like 22 that's talking about committee meetings so that would just be a little excuse convoluted me. excuse me yeah go ahead the section is written agenda we could say written agendas we could also say 8.3.1 and then use a committee a committee def committee definition for that written agenda you could slip that in on every one of these a point one after each one of these particular paragraphs okay and make them committee friendly you you could do that but i just wonder given the structure the fact that it starts like in 22 where it talks about committee meetings and 23 standing committees and then 24 general duties of standing committees and they go through all of that that perhaps the board put structured it this way so you would have the county board meetings at the beginning and the committee meetings at the end now the task force, as I recall, and Supervisor Dowling, please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't, we have not, the task force on rules has not gotten to eight yet. We're, I think we're, Supervisor Hanson, what are we at, six? Or f nine? Nine, six and nine. So we haven't gotten to eight yet. But that's, that's the task force on rules. And I understand this is separate because 
Vice Chair Ford put this All forward. Right. But, I mean, could you do it? Yeah, I guess you could do it. Yeah. I just think it would, you're not only, you're gonna have to change 8.1, 8.2. I really think you're gonna need to have to change a lot of it. And it might just get a little bit, uh, yeah, difficult. 8.1.1 8 .1 or 8.2.1. So then you're gonna have to go to Each all one. the way down to 8.11.1. So you're gonna have to do, do you see? It's gonna be really, I just think it's gonna be complicated. But these are your rules. You can decide how you want to go. Time's up. Supervisor Stafford. <laughs> I've heard her twice, and I've already yeah. spoken twice. So I, I don't know what you want me to say. But I can okay. surely talk, but I'm going to just say <laughs> thank you. I think um, Supervisor Holber was next. Wasn't Supervisor Holber next? Supervisor Holber, I believe it's your second time. So I keep calling point of order because I was wanting clarification. We said there was an amendment and then we got a second and now we're talking about a friendly amendment. How are we moving backwards to change this? I'm withdrawing my second. Thank you. Now, can we call the question? That's what you're calling. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Motion made and seconded to call the question. You got the second? Who seconded it? You did? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Vice Chairman Farr, we'd like to have you read that back so everyone understands what you're voting on. I'm just going to read line 16 through 19. So it should be the agenda along with appropriate attachments shall be sent, emailed, electronically posted, accessible, and otherwise deposited for delivery at least seven days before the committee, commission, or board meeting. It must provide the supervisors with all necessary access information to attend remotely if the remote option is invoked for said meeting. And then, and then with the friendly. Yeah, there was a friendly amendment too. I thought someone just withdrew the second. No, he he withdrew his uh, when the other part, not the friendly amendment. Okay. So then the friendly amendment. The agenda may be amended within seven days of the meeting pending approval of the chairperson. Was the friendly amendment? Correct. Okay. So that's so, what you're voting on. So this. Yes. Yep. Are we voting on the resolution or the call the question? Call the question. Got to do that first. All those in favor of calling the question signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. nay. Carried. One nay. Supervisor Rankin. All right, now we'll vote on the other and we'll vote by machine. Okay, hold on, I've got to make sure I'm in the right spot. As amended. As amended. Uh, We're not voting yet. She's still doing, taking off the last, that's the last one. That's called the question. So if you're in favor of rule 22.3 as amended, vote yes. If you're not, vote no and push save. And that passed 30 to 2.
with one, two of, uh, well, two missing. So 30 to two have passed. So before you all leave tonight, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and good luck to you, Deer Hunter. Or Merry Christmas, I'm thinking of that already. Uh, yeah, a good turkey day, a good turkey day. A good Thanksgiving and good luck to you hunters. So we are open for adjournment. Motion made and second adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.